I'll be very honest. Like when there's a very strange thing when you read Sandman. Um, there are a thousand pages, and you become so intimate with Morpheus. You know every single thing about him, about what he thinks and feels and wants. And you get to the end of it, and you think that you've lived a life with him, and then you ask yourself one question, especially when you're playing him, and you think you know the answer. And that question is, what does his voice sound like? Because you realize that you spent all this time with him looking at these images and reading these words, but you haven't fucking heard that voice. And there's something, there's something in the um, speech bubbles, uh, the way that the um, that the, they're black and the capital, the white capitals on top of them, like you do hear something. And anyway, w w I, w the point I'm getting to is that I asked Neil at the beginning. That was my first question. I said to him, like before the apocryphal story where he said he doesn't sound like Batman. Um, I said, "What does he sound like?" Because I don't know, and I'm afraid. Um, and he said it's very simple. Um, to begin with, he is the voice inside your head, which sounds uh, facetious and, and trite, but I guarantee the voice inside your head is not Batman's voice. <laughs> I, so it's very helpful. <laughs> um, and then beyond that, he said he has to be, it has to be a voice that, that seduces you into sleep. That, that allows you to agree to go with him into the dreaming. And then a voice that also has the danger of a nightmare. Um, and so it was a beautiful answer. And I went, OK, thanks. <laughs> I'm just going to figure that one out then. <laughs> with, uh, with Desire in particular, I sort of started with where my voice already is. Um, because I kind of, I, I think I hear it in a similar way to, to how I hear dream. Like there is a, a weight and a presence to all of the endless. And so because of that, I was like, well, I think I'll just use kind of like the lower part of my range that I don't often use in my work, um, which is really nice because I didn't have to work as hard. But, um, but from there, it was just like uh, voices in my head and people in my head that kind of gave me those feelings and times in my life, um, certain sound qualities that like make, make your back kind of arch when you hear people talk. And, and that was very important. That was important, you know, to me and to that character. So I, you know, there's every bit like Tim Curry's Frankenfurter in moments and like things that I remember seeing that were like very formative to my own experience with sexuality and with love and all of those things throughout my life. Uh, I just remember another thing that Neil said to me, which was that um, Morpheus has thought, like every thought that could possibly be thought. Like there's, he, he, ha, he is endless, and therefore when he speaks, there's no hesitation. It's, it is written in stone. Um, and so I guess I just thought of what it might sound like to write in stone with my voice. Yeah. <laughs>